Welcome to the TuckCast with a splash of bourbon presented by Tuckasegee Fly Shop and Guide Service. Located at 3 Depot Street, Bryson City and 530 West Main Street, Silva, North Carolina. Tuckasegee Fly Shop and Guide Service is your number one stop prior and after your epic fly fishing adventure in Western North Carolina. Visit TuckFlyShop.com for stream flow information. Book a guided trip or even shop for your official Tuckasegee Fly Shop gear. Follow the crew on Facebook at Tuckasegee Fly Shop, Instagram at Tuck Fly Shop, and on YouTube at Tuckasegee Fly Shop. Today's episode is brought to you by Norvox. From their original 1970s prototype to the latest Legacy C in five amazing colors. Radical Red, Sunset Orange, Shamrock Green, Royal Purple, Liberty Blue. Norvice has been committed to one thing, efficiency. By adding the Norvice Auto Bobbin to your Norvice, you can tie better flies faster. For more information, visit www.nor-vice.com. Here in our Silver Studios today, we have Coach Dale Diesel Collins, Bobby the Bearded Wonder Bennett, and I'm your host, Shannon, Big Mess Messer. Hey, hey, hey. hey. Sh- Shannon's got the most comfortable seat in the house. You know it, brother. He's sitting on that hemorrhoid pad. Yeah. <laughs> That's a non-hemorrhoid or pad, by the way. Or is that a donut way. hole? Not a donut either. It's not even shaped like one. It does have a little cutout there on the front for something. It's for <laughs> spine alignment. It what? is. Yes. <laughs> Google it. Please. Buy it. Spinal alignment. I am not Spinal Googling alignment. that. Thing. Come what? on, no. man. Yeah, you Come gotta on. Have, you got to get your iPad out so we can Google stuff. If Come we on, need to. man. Yeah. I've got, one at, I've got one at the house Yeah, that I use at the tying bench. You got one yeah. in your car? No. <laughs> the reason why I have That's it here good. is because the chairs don't go up high enough for me to set at this table. Because you're that European cut. Hey, do they still I, make those? I'm something cut. You remember those seat cover things that were like the wooden beads? Oh, yeah. Do they still oh, make those? Oh, my gosh. The, people had those in cars. Drivers. Yeah. yeah. They what would, did that do for you? Does anybody know? I have no clue. It's like a little massage thing. But it didn't like vibrate or anything, right? It just like. Maybe if you went across the road. Yeah, it depends on <laughs> North Carolina Why roads in March going or, across or the North Carolina yeah. roads in July. Freaky. Yeah. I don't know. No, people would come, you know, every once in a while and trade those cars in. They had some funky seat covers on them things. Yeah. Yeah, the wooden ones. Funky though, smells, I mean. too. Oh, you ain't whistling Dixie. <laughs> mm. Oh, we can't do that. <laughs> we sorry for the people we offended. But, uh, no. Well, you know what the best thing about trade-ins? What's that? People left their loose change. <laughs> Did y'all fight over that? Oh, dude. Like, yes. Who gets to get the change money? One of the sizzler. Man. You could add did add it up over a year. You could come up with some with some uh, quite a bit of coin. I can't no believe people left that in there. Yeah, I mm-hmm. always get that out. Yep. Not that I keep a lot of change mm-hmm. anymore, but back in the day, same thing. Navy story. When people would leave, when people would leave the fleet, when they discharged in the rack, wake up, Dale. They would uh, they just leave all these coins, and you just go through, just whoop, boom. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's free money. Like the it's guy f- that goes behind. It's free money. It's free everybody. money. <laughs> It's like walking around the car hey, wash looking for have the you ever Have you ever, like, at the end of a, I don't know, a sporting event, walked around the stadium trying to collect those uh, the souvenir cups no. that people leave behind? No. Yes, you have. No. Come I totally on. did. No. I totally did. No. Yeah. I went no, to a Panthers game when I was in college somehow. I think it was a year that yeah. was terrible, and I had cheap tickets. Yeah. But, um, well, that doesn't narrow it down, right? But, um, the uh, man, souvenir cups everywhere. My apartment was like loaded with souvenir cups. Well, you were furnishing your apartment then. Yeah. Yeah. There was a purpose. I mean, I'd still do it. You so know. when you got married, were you like, Stacy, we don't need to register for glasses. Like, we're good. Look, we need to really make sure we hand wash these Greensboro grasshopper cups. Yeah. Sir so. Purr is in the house. That's it. <laughs> hey, it's starting to feel like spring outside. Yes. You know what that means? Baseball. We have Coronas. The drink. The drink. Not- <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the the beverage, the beverage. Compliments of of our good friend Dawn. So, Dawn and I fished yesterday. Had a great time, great mm-hmm. fishing, and um, that's always our ramp beer. Yeah. So at the end of 
You need yeah. to give a shout out oh, to the guy you didn't bring his bourbon today. Ramp, so, ramp beer. Ramp beer. I thought you said rant. No, 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 no. R A M P. Like right the boat you. ramp. Yeah. It's yeah. about time to dig some ramp. Yeah. So uh, big thanks goes out to Randy. What's his last name? Collins. Are um, we all related? It's, it's, it's Randy Collins. We are not of kin. <laughs> So. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, and uh, Woodford Reserve Double mm-hmm. Oak, yeah, fantastic. Just a really nice finish all around. Really good to drink neat. Um, so, uh, Randy stopped by Friday. This is the guy that came in. You made him use the bathroom with your water report. Fr- oh, uh, he report said water. he was, yeah, yeah, Randy man yeah, he came by. Yeah, so I, I haven't seen the bourbon, Randy. It's still still at the house. Oh, okay, yeah. so. Dale didn't uh, let thanks, go Randy. It. Thanks. He, he gave it to Dell at the counter, and Dell yeah. never took his hand off of it. <laughs> like it went from there to his car before he went home. That bring back a memory, uh, Randy. Sorry, Randy. Sorry, Randy. <laughs> so hit that rest stop. <laughs> but but uh, but yeah, Randy came in. Uh, we we gave nice. Randy some advice, and he went up and caught some beautiful fish up in the Great Smoky Mountain. Oh, National nice, Park. man. That's yeah. perfect. Messer Creek, baby. Yeah. So thank you, Randy. All right, thank you, Randy. Good job. Awesome. So what are we doing on the show today? Um, hey man, before we get into oh, that, oh, sorry, um, sorry. dude, uh, uh, shout out to the uh, to the folks that re- that responded about the Green River. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have their names. Yeah. But so a lot go of to our go to our YouTube channel and look at the comments on that video. And man, they gave both of those guys. I guess they were both guys. Um, you never know with the YouTube handles handles. Read through that, man. They gave a ton of info. Both of them. I mean, it's. Detailed. It's a, yeah, it's very detailed. It's a long read, but it's very good. Um, so we got the one guy's posted up. He kept kicking his post back, so we had to post his comment to get it to, to work. Uh, backbones. Backbones. Backbones with a Z. Whoever like that, that is. All right. Today was a good day. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We'll stop at that little gangster. <laughs> Ice cube. Gangster. So, uh, and then, uh, what? Uh, Chris. Chris. Yeah. Chris says, thanks, Chris. Yeah, it says, uh, yeah, I think Bobby had to post that one um, for him because some said we, we we didn't push the right button. Yeah, I don't know if it was something in settings or why it kept kicking it back, but we got yeah, it worked so, out. It's uh, up there. You know, if you go, if you listen to that one, go back and look at the comments on YouTube. There's some good, some really good intel there on uh, the Green River Delayed Harvest. Perfect. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you, guys. We have the best listeners, man. I think so. Yes, we do. We do. Don't think. We do, Bobby. I think so. That's my opinion, too. <laughs> a little birdie. Is that cartoon still up? Tweety Pie? Mm-mm. They take Sylvester and Tweety Sylvester, Pie down? Sylvester, got it. Hey, did y'all watch the race, by the way? Yeah, I did. Me and me and Dale were talking. You know that curve up there um, on the Acona Lufty where the rock wall is, and you can cut the corner into the... That's like, 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 it's like Phoenix. Said, I'm I pulled a Keselowski today. Did you about hit the wall? I, I hugged that wall right <laughs> Dude, there. Dude, when he went, I thought he was going to nail that wall, man. Oh, man. It shortened the track a lot for me. Hey, man. Hey. Your boy got up to seven on old tires. Dude, man, quit calling him my boy. Well, you, it's Jordan that he's talking it's, about. Yeah, he's, but no, he, he's your talking boy's about Bubba. 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 Your boy's I, car. It's, it's Michael Jordan. He got to seven. Huh? He got to seven. It's t- hey, oh, did he finish where is he in points? He's way back now. His points ain't good. No. <laughs> I don't know. It's don't catching know. up to him. I never look at the points. Yeah, so this weekend, Atlanta. Atlanta, and then it's Bristol. And it's Clint Bristol, going? baby. Is Clint going to the – I'm actually going with Clint. Are he you? Had, oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow, that Breaking that news, nice, Dale. I didn't get – he said, yeah. hey, I got an extra ticket. You want to go? And I said, okay. Man, yeah. ne- hey, Clint, next time you ask for advice on how the river's fishing, I'll, I'll let you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, yeah. He yeah. sent me a thing and said, uh, hey, we can only take these in. It's got to be clear to carry drinks in. It's like yeah. a clear – plastic thing yeah hey yeah. we got some clear um trash bags back here from american rivers it's had work a little 35 gallon bag it's clear, clear baby it works yeah That's they're turning hot of... laps up there at bristol you can watch that i've been watching that some so i actually yeah. want to go down there to that um those races down in georgia that clint goes to they're it's just the old school dirt track oh yeah it's it's kind of like bowman gray you, <coughs> y'all need hey, to they, go to bowman they, gray. they mentioned bowman gray uh, on the pre uh, the the pre race show, yeah. show mm-hmm. they were showing the what is it? No, you didn't, or whatever they <laughs> yeah. call it. Mm-hmm. And it, one of them was at Bowman Gray. Yeah, where it was. They, like, stacked Dude, up. he stacked, man. It <laughs> was that is the craziest <laughs> yeah. track. They did. That they is did. a like, you know, the Winston Salem State yeah. plays their football there. But then, what used to be the track 
for track and field, they just paved. Yeah. Let's let's race cars on this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, it works, man. That's so right. It's like Bristol, mm-hmm. no banks. Yeah. I understand. So maybe there's banks there. I can't even, No, there's not. Yeah. It's crazy. Crazy racing, for sure. Always a it's good It's racing, fight. man. It's just the racing. The sheriffs always come out. It's great. Oh, you got to love it. Did you ever race, like, your bike and stuff? Growing up? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody likes to race. Oh, yeah. Oh, you mean, like, racing your buddy? Like, yeah, I mean, everybody just likes, first? everybody loves to race, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So you got to be first. If you ain't first, that, last. that can get you in trouble, me, me and my buddy, Justin. We, um, he gets you tickets to Atlanta? No, no. Mm-hmm. No, we were on our bikes <laughs> in our little our little ha- hometown of Pine Bluff. Shout yep. out. Mm-hmm. Um, All three people heard you. <laughs> and we were we were racing, <laughs> but we didn't race to the first stop sign. We were racing to the second stop sign. Oh, so no. So through that intersection, no, dude, we about got hit by oh, cars. Oh, no. Because it was one of those like, ah, there's never a car coming here. And there was a car. And, yeah, I thought Justin got annihilated. He somehow turned and totally. Wow. Were they yeah. laying on the horn? Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Holy cow. Wow. Yeah. I was glad I wasn't in the lead that day. No E.T. that <laughs> day, huh? Glad yeah. I had that wow. second hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a third, too. Oh, what, man. Man, it is hot in here. Is it the it corona? Is. No, it's, no, it's warm. It's barnacles. like you said, spring, brother. Gosh, I feel good. Thanks. Yeah. All right, Having man. Having too much fun. Yes, So today's we show, what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we talking you, about? You guys had it planned out. Dale had a great idea. What's your idea, Dale? So what do, and, and this would be great if we had, like, Listener interaction on this one, but what what do you look for in a fly shop? So he's wanting to make sure we're doing it all right. That's it. I mean, when you walk into a fly shop, what do you think about? What are you, are you impressed by? What are you looking for? Um, you may not be buying it, but like, what what do you go? Hey, man, yeah. they they've got that. You know, like that's cool. I'll come back and grab it. Or so basically, what makes a or are you looking for certain features? Are you looking yeah, for like a right. drift boat sitting in the center of it okay. or an aquarium? Wow. Or, you know, we've seen sure. some stuff when you yeah. go to different, mm-hmm. different shops. Right. So, like, what are you looking for in those instances? Yeah, that is yeah. interesting. I mean, if you... And what are our opinions, obviously? Yeah, I think our opinions are probably different than than customers, and, and maybe not. But when we lock, walk into one, maybe we're more critical. Or may, I, I tend to be maybe a little bit more critical. Because I'm looking working at, at I'm obviously looking at what they're selling. I'm looking at what they're selling, but I'm looking at uh, how it's presented, uh, how much inventory is in there. But, you know, what's the customer service like, most importantly? Yeah. You know, is it clean? The, you know, those I think, things. I think that's what I enjoy. I mean, the fishing's great out west. But I enjoy getting to go into other shops when mm-hmm. we travel, even if it's not the western trips, but even if we're, let's say, going up to Pennsylvania or something. Um, and am I greeted? Yeah, you know, like how is that first interaction? And I know if people walk into our shop, they our expectation is you're going to be greeted. Yeah, I'd say ninety five to ninety eight percent of the time that happens. And if you're a regular, we're going to know you. Mm-hmm. So we may not remember your name exactly, but we're going to talk to you like we we remember you were here last time. So that that relational piece to it. When if if I can make a lap. In, in my opinion, if I can make a lap in your business and nobody like a lap around the store nobody acknowledge me i'm done i'm out yeah just a hey how you doing today now if it's That's busy if there's 10 people and two people are working and they're all engaged like you know somebody's maybe trying waiters on or, or somebody's you know checking the girders on the rotor line or something i don't know <laughs> <laughs> tommy boy you know yeah yeah uh, <laughs> um then you know it's understandable but you know, I, I think I think that's that's paramount for sure. But uh, you know, that's so I I, I kind of focus more on the like relational part. But what about you, Shannon? Like, you know, you, you talked about looking at how things are presented. So it tells me aesthetics matter to you. Aesthetics matter. I am uh, sure certainly me and feel like I'm welcomed, whether it's, you know, some type of acknowledging acknowledgement. It could be via verbally or it can be um, body language with, you know, if you're helping someone, so, you know, you just want the head nod. Yeah, I mean, if you're certainly helping someone, just to not, hey, we're, you know, yeah, you're in I our business. You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you're here. Don't try to walk out with anything. We got our eye on you, kind of thing. But because <laughs> you look, you look you know, like you that look, guy. I look that guy. Yeah. I like that guy. But uh, no, I I am one that uh, presentation does matter, selection matters. But yet, if I need help, I want to be able to be helped. Mm-hmm. Um, with that understanding that if they're busy, I 
common courtesy should say, hey, they're busy. It's going to take yeah, a moment. Right. Also, I'm not going to barge in front of someone. And I don't necessarily need casual conversation either. I'm the kind of customer who kind of likes to look and not be bothered to. Me too. Yeah. I like so the interaction. Over, hey, how over active can be a little bit of a turnoff to me. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely at first if I don't know you. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I agree with that. I think I'm in that same kind Well, of and you know, that's just like, you know, as typically as Americans, we have our bubble. Like that's kind of how our culture is. We have our bubble. Um, and we don't, that that's our comfort space. And we don't want people coming inside that bubble. And that could be, you know, we will walk into a store, you know, our bubble gets bigger. You know, we, we might feel uncomfortable. And sometimes some people are going to feel uncomfortable um, and just want to be left alone. So, like, don't, but I wonder, though, how much bigger the bubble is now with COVID. Yeah, yeah, no. I think, it, like, I think it's think changed. Europe, like, everybody's, like, crowded on top of each other, right? And space is 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 not something like that's something Americans value is our space. But in Europe it's like people walk up to you and they'll talk to you like I've never been but this is what what I'm here. No, Europe Europeans You've been are, there. Yeah, mm -hmm. Europeans are very uh hands on. Yeah. Like right. A lot of greetings are, you know, kiss yes, each other they are. Cheek, even, even yeah. between men. You know, they touch a lot. It's Conversationally a lot of, they even talk with their yes. hands. Yeah. So so, so it's, I wonder like coming out of the pandemic, like is, is our bubble Six feet now. Yeah. Um, but on the flip side, if I want some help with a product or I have a question about it, I want someone who can talk to me about the product mm -hmm. that knows the product. Yeah. And I feel like it's okay if I have them do that, that they should ask for my business too. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's part of it. I know some box stores you can walk into and never get talked to about anything. Correct. Yeah, we hear those stories a lot. Man, you can yeah. try to get help and you can't get helped. It's like I hear some of the some of the big box stores like, oh, they're carrying this now. They're they're competing with y'all. It's like that's all right. You know, nobody. You know, n nobody's going to engage you. So, you know, I think the other part though, if a big box store is carrying it, it's not necessarily the same product that we have here at the shop it could be the same manufacturer yeah but i think we have the ability or any fly shop has the ability a good one to really dial in you know the right products right for that particular area and anglers we're having in yeah where a box yeah. store is just buying just bulk mm -hmm. and they're looking a lot of times to sell a price instead of a product yeah so, you know, that's, that's important right. to go into a I mean, shop. That's a great way to look at it because a lot of the rods we carry are for our area. Sure. Like, this is the rod we think is great in the Smokies. This is the rod great for the tuck. This is one for smallmouth, you know, things like that. So that right. is a great way to kind of present yeah. it. Do you guys look for, like, what we got, the chalkboard when you go in a shop? Like, are you, like, I want that info put up, especially with, like, flows and fly selections? And, like, is that important to you it, when you go in? If I'm new to an area, those flows mean nothing to me. Yeah. you got to have a visual to know what those numbers are, yeah. unless you are getting some explanation from somebody in the know from behind the counter. Um, but fly selection, I, I think that is beneficial. But I, and so I challenge us here in this. We've got those flies up there on the board that's that's really good flies right now, but how do I find them on the on the mm -hmm. table? Yeah. You know, like, like, okay, I see the words, but you're helping somebody. How do I find those words on the fly bins? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. But – um no, I, I think there's some really valuable information up there um, for sure. Probably, you know, the most valuable information up there is, besides the, the stream flows, if you have a visual knowledge, is, is the, the leader link. Yeah, leader and tippet suggestions. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you walk into a shop, Bobby. You can't turn that switch off. Uh, you, can you just be a consumer and think about what you – I know you're kind of looking at inventory, see what they're selling. So you got your fly shop hat on still. What? Are, so no, no, I take my fly shop hat off so they don't know. Bobby's the guy scoping them out. That's it. <laughs> what are these guys doing? Right? Bobby's the guy you don't want walking in your shop. What are you doing that I can no, make but a million I mean, dollars? You know, on? what are you looking for? If if I'm on the relational part, Shannon's the aesthetics, how it looks and how it's presented. Aste what? Aesthetics matter to me. Yeah, I think that's one thing that um, I, I'm like I told Dale today. I may be a little OCD. It was popping a top. Y'all like that, didn't you? Yeah, I heard it. Um, see, aesthetics, I think, are important. You know, 
Uh, and it's not like, oh, they've got the nicest rod rack or reel rack I've ever seen in my life. It's not that. It's more of it. everything's in order, you know? It's not like there, there's a disheveled. System, there, well, yeah, there's, it's not disheveled, and there's a system to the shop. Yeah. Like, you know, the boots and waders are in this area, and it's not like I have to walk all the way to the other side of the shop to get to the boots where the waders were. Or the rods and reels are close together. Because that's nice to see, like, if a rod and a reel kind of match or look how it looks. You can just pull the reel and show it against the rod. You know, leader tip it and fly line. You know, you shouldn't have that in four different places. Um, you should kind of have it all, you know, just things like that that just make sense. But then it's also cool to see how people change things up and, you know, make a display. And not necessarily for the sales of it, but, like, the mannequins and stuff like the visual like oh dude that looks cool sitting on that or it goes well with that shirt or whatever it may be so um it's not necessarily that like you've got the best fixture ever it's more of just it makes sense when you walk in yeah i do enjoy seeing i remember i was up at um beaver creek fly shop up in maryland and just noticing how they display their reels they've got a gorgeous display and it, it makes sense yeah um and it's like man how do we incorporate that here you know and and i think that's that's definitely yeah that's a great point to, to pay attention well to. and you want people I, I think you know part of the fun of going in a fly shop too is being able to to touch the item you know um, so it's not behind glass yeah i don't i don't like it when reels are always in a case now in bryson city we do have them in case because we don't have a lot of room it's a small shop um, but I mean, we leave the key in it. You can open it. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty simple, but, yeah, for, but I do like that, you know, certain shops, man, it's like I have gone in, it's, it's almost a pain to get to just hold a reel. Yeah. You know? Um, so it is nice to have stuff where you can hold it. Now, if somebody stole a reel from us, would you change that thought? Uh, no, not necessarily. Cause yeah. I mean, it's like, that's one instance out of how many yeah, interactions I mean, yeah. a year, you know, it, it would, it wouldn't make me happy, obviously, but you know. It's like you can't change your entire life off of one instance. So. I remember seeing, um, I don't know which shop it was, but they had the reels on like hand, like real rod handles. So you could mm -hmm. actually, it's like walking into a house and you, you know, you want all the family pictures that you're per, like, you're looking to buy a home. You take all the family pictures off so people can see their selves in that house. So I could see myself holding this reel on my on, rod. On a rod, yeah. So I, I did enjoy that. Um, there's definitely been some cool rod displays. Oh yeah, that one in uh, what was the one in Orlando? What was the name? Was oh, it Orlando yeah. Fly Shop, where it was like a huge. You walked through it, and there was rods that came up over you and on your sides, and you walked through this thing. It was yeah. pretty cool. Um, yeah. So yeah, I've seen cool I've seen a rod rack that's that's kind of floating, suspended from the ceiling. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah, there's there's some good ones out there. So. That that's where it's taking the fixture to that next level of it's presented it's properly, but it's it's the next level, and you got to have the the shop that works for that too, you know, which is sometimes tough depending on what you've got to work with. So here in a drop ceiling, it's harder for us to do a suspended one if we even wanted to. But yeah, um, we're definitely limited by space. Yeah, um, in here we we're talking with Fred about the the original ceiling for the building. Yes, it's still up here. It's up behind the layers of other ceilings. Yeah. But it's like if if because I do like that look that kind of modern industrial where it's yeah. it's it's black and you've mm -hmm. got the you can see the pipes the or uh, the ductwork and things like that. But it's like there's so many wires above us. I yeah. guess going to all the lights, yeah. it's insane. And then there's all kinds of plumbing for the upstairs piece to this building. Yeah, it's you'd like, have to paint it all black, man. Ah, no, but yeah, I don't so know if it I. It's like I don't know if I ever want to see that leak. Coming from the pipe. <laughs> <laughs> but I, then again, seeing that brown stain on a tile ain't too pretty either. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'd rather see the leak than feel the leak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I agree with that. So the uh, tile catches it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a good point. <laughs> yes. That's a great point. That's right. So when it comes to fly tying, Shannon, since you're more of a guru of fly tying than me and Dale, I mean, are you looking for anything in particular in the fly tying? Uh, you know, fly tying is such a hard one. I mean, to, nobody can carry to it purchase all. for. Yeah. And I believe you should try to do as good of a job as you can for the specific area you're at. So, for instance, here we're not really tying, you know, salmon type flies or steelhead type patterns or. You know, things, you know, saltwater stuff. So 
to really dive extensively into that particular area would not be a smart business decision. In yeah, because we're not going to sell a lot of it. Because we're not going to sell a lot of it. Mm-hmm. But I think certainly having, a, you know, hooks and beads now and threads of different ones, and we try to, and it's the difficult part of this because it's not like a preseason type ordering. And I know the struggles that we have, and we, we want to do more, and you do it. You do this order, and you come in, and you get a third of what you ordered or even a, a fifth of what you ordered. It, it's it's tough right now. Yeah, because we're at the mercy of how Very, many pheasants were killed that year, oh or how many gosh. deer. Or, mm-hmm. you know, sure. that's, that's, what, that's where the, the supply is coming mm-hmm. from is hunters. But I'm overwhelmed. They're somewhat a like kid in a candy store when there's a fly shop that has just a massive yeah. – Area, so I understand the amount of money they have invested in it. Mm-hmm. You know, feathers and you know, dry fly feathers. Um, you know, uh, hen feathers for soft tackles, all sloppins and everything. You know, they have put a huge commitment into that particular department. And at the end of the day, it's probably a big part of that uh, business's bottom line. Yeah, and maybe have a really big online shop presence to make mm-hmm. that work. Uh, you go into some, they may not have as much, but they have what you're looking for. That's it, yeah. They have and that is just as important as the shop that has all kinds of stuff there. Yeah. I think that's the greatest deterrent of people fly tying. Overwhelming. They, well, the, but they walk in with a recipe card, and you got, and you know, we can't have everything. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, let me just say that. Shoot, we couldn't, if we had everything, it would it would not fit in this shop. But, but it like, does break my heart when I see it happen to us. Mm-hmm. And it, it does from time to time. It happens, yeah. But people bring the recipe card in, and maybe you've only got two of the five things they need. I yeah. don't know. And then more often than not, we can help them. Mm-hmm. We, we make the recipe card work. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, or we it, because of hook sizes, and it never, like one brand's hook size to another brand right. is never the same. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I, I think I think that's a... The biggest deterrent because you get two of the things and then it's like, well, now what? I think part of that too, Dell and Bobby, is that we live in a society today with the social media platforms via YouTube or yeah. Instagram or Facebook Live, where as a fly shop, you could go to your wall, take these materials, throw that pattern together and introduce this as the latest, greatest fly. Someone sees it 700 miles away. They want to walk into the fly shop here, pull those same items. Mm -hmm. That happens on a daily basis. Yeah. Yeah. And that is kind of difficult to plan for. Mm -hmm. But if you think about here, a prince nymph, a pheasant tail, a hare's ear, woolly boogers, you know, copper johns, variations off those, most of the time you're going to be able to find those type things to do that. Right. Um, when you start to get specific on, um, you know, Egan, so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so, well, that might not be the case but because they might have went to their fly tying department and we, let's pull this little quill here. We're going to do this. We're going to tie this little party going style today with a uh, that tungsten bead. It's like the shape of a teardrop. That's not a tongue, you know, it's yeah. like an insta jig thing and, We've done this, and we put the resin, and now we've got this size 20 Pertigone, and everybody's like, let me go tie that. Well, we don't stock that type of Yeah, you know, I remember bead. when everybody was big on the France fly. You know, it, it, it goes through phases. The waves, yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've seen that. We've seen it. Yeah. We've we've ordered heavy on fly tying, and it's like, oh, we sold. Oh, now it's not selling. Yeah. yeah. Because the wave is over, and it goes fast. It comes and goes mm-hmm. fast in fly tying. We're, we're stacked up on stretch tubing now. If anybody wants to buy some, <laughs> yeah, that was France that was flies. one of those. Yeah, where France flies just thing. fell off the net. It's the next new thing. There are the, out of the stretch tubing though. We've got a regular customer base that used that we do really well with the olive and the black mm-hmm. and the clear. Yeah, we actually rotate that out of here probably more than you you realize. No, it, uh, it, it it's one of those things, but but then again. That doesn't mean you got to have seven different colors. You narrow down kind of what that is for that area. Yeah. And I have a lot of respect for shops that have that dialed in because that's a, that's a tough one. Mm-hmm. That's Absolutely that's tough. Is. That's yeah. tough. I don't think. And what Dell said, come in, maybe being disappointed. I think if those people spend a week here or two weeks here, oh yeah, they would like, oh okay, I but get it. They're now. new tires, you know. Sure. A lot of times, mm-hmm. people bringing the recipe cards in are new tires, mm-hmm. and yeah. I was that guy. I mean, sure. that's, that's the perspective we always try to keep in this shop is mm-hmm. the other side of the counter. Sure. And we yeah. never want to lose that because that's right. how we want to be treated. Mm-hmm. 
uh, and what we expect in a shop for sure. So, well, I think um, not only you know materials, you look at tools, you look at you know vices. Vices, yeah, yeah. Those things are important. So if y- you can easily tie up a lot of money in a fly tying department, and you may not have as much money to spend in other areas of the shop, yeah. so there's that fine balance. Uh, but so seeing it, you're walking into a shop where it all works mm-hmm. and there's someone there who can talk to you about a particular product or, hey, this is a new product. This is how you use it. Um, that's important. And for myself, if I'm going to be somewhere and I see it, maybe they have a certain color feather that's rocking, but I can't open it up to take a look at it because they won't yeah. let me. I won't buy it. That's, yeah. a, that's a turn off. Yeah. So I want to be able to inspect it. Interesting. I will totally not buy nothing. So, you know, oh, go ahead. No, go, go for it, man. I was just going to say, I, I like what Dawn did today. Dawn, that we fished yesterday, left the Coronas with us. Um, she basically booked a whole day with you today in the shop, and she sat in here. She brought her vice. She set up and tied flies, and you were here to, you know, when she needed some assistance, you are here. Right. And that that's actually, you know, from that beginner perspective, a great way to do it. Um and and not necessarily go by recipe card or the the YouTube video recipe, but okay, this is this fly. I want to learn it. This fly, that fly. Like let's let's pick four flies and let's spend a day and really perfect that technique and yeah. know know the materials and the variances within. So, mm-hmm. so. Wait, sorry, what are you gonna say? Oh, I was gonna switch from fly time. <clears throat> if y'all are. Good. Yeah, I mean, we could we could spend two episodes yeah. on, oh, on yeah, the fly tying aspect of it. So, for sure. so talking about like the parallelization of being a new tire, walking into a fly tying section and going, "Oh my god, I don't know what's going." on. Do you guys find it like in in another section of the shop? So I'm going to use Tippet as an example, where we've got four four brands of Tippet. Like, mm. is there is there a case where you're like uh, they've got so many different brands of something of the same item that you kind of get lost of, I don't know what to buy. Now, this is before you, you worked in a fly shop or owned a fly shop. Like, did you ever feel like, wow, there's just so much here. I don't even know where to start. Yeah, I, I didn't know what I was buying. You know, I, I, I don't I don't think I really did. Um, denied. We, I was about to say, your phone's vibrating. Denied. Um, yeah, I, I remember being that guy walking into the, I mean, I was living in Greensboro, and there was nobody to help me. Yeah, well, it's not about somebody helping. It's more, but that's I, that's why I didn't know what I was buying. Yeah, I, I watched a special on Costco, and this was years ago. That you know they they only carry two types of ketchup, two brands of ketchup. You mm-hmm. know, the Kirkland's brand and the Heinz or whichever Hunts, whichever one it was, because they've done studies that if you have more than that, people won't buy as much because they go, I don't know which one to buy, and they use ketchup as an example. So I didn't know if that's something that y'all ever experienced where you're like, yeah, I don't. I, there's just I, I there's too many five weight fly lines here. I, I I'm just gonna go do more research before I buy over one. Does that make sense? It, it does. Now I obviously have a few more years on you guys. Yeah. And understand that we were very limited in Waynesville yeah. what we could go get. <laughs> so we had a store called the Army Store, mm-hmm. and I remember as I might have been 11, 12, I was trying to buy a fly line. It was, that was uh, back when they had glass Coke bottles. Sci- yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Loved them. Love them. Um, scientific Anglers mm-hmm. was the flat line. But, uh, you know, not necessarily knowing I'm doing this on my own, my own money, knowing, you know, which one of those do I need to buy. There wasn't a huge selection. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Was, was your choice between silk and horsehair? No, it was a little bit more advanced <laughs> than that. It was a little bit more advanced than that. They still sell seal fur back but, then? But, uh, yes, they did. Just got some patterns that you use seal fur. I've got a little bit of it left. <laughs> but um, those aren't going in the bins. <laughs> and, um, but as far as leader tippet, there wasn't any options. Yeah. It was Cortland. Yeah, that was all you. That was what, all that was your you, choice. That was it. There was well, see, that no makes it easy choices. Because oh, then it's it. just like, hey, I've got Cortland. Right, this is the size I need, but it's one brand. That's it. Boom. That's it. Yeah. It was real simple. Do I think that it can be confusing? Absolutely. And that's where the customer service aspects of, you yeah. know, you got to be met and Gret. Do you, you know, counseling? Oh, I'm just looking. Oh, no, I'm looking. I need to get some leaders tip it. Boom, you kind of yeah, here's our conversation. options. Yeah. Well, that's yes. the thing is there is a lot more car competition in the market than 1946 in Waynesville. That's right. So, um, <laughs> you know, so it's like if, if we don't have one, they can just maybe 
can go to another town and find it. So yeah, I mean that's where we try to. Well, that's the reason we carry them because you, you've got the it. you've got the Rio loyal person, the SA loyal, the trout hunter person. You know, like that's their brand. So I mean that's but I've I've wondered from like a beginner's perspective, are they, you know, in that? Oh, I don't even. Know. I mean, a lot of people don't even know what the spools are. I didn't know that when I was buying the Rio back in uh, the mid two thousands. I didn't know what monofilament and fluorocarbon. Like if somebody was said fluorocarbon, I don't know like, what. Yeah. Now I, I that was living in a place that wasn't fly fishing central, right? And there was not a fly shop in college for me to rely on. So yeah, I just went with what a what what I found, what I had, what felt good. I guess it, so. Right. This looks right. Let's but do when it. them knots were slipping. I had no idea why the knots were slipping. No, yeah. Nobody was filling me in on that one. Yeah. You know? So if I was going from like 4X to 7, like that ain't going to work. <laughs> so It'll work. It just don't work well. But I didn't know to have, you know, you know, let's say, you know, 3X through 7X until I think after I'd left education. Yeah. So left teaching. What about like logo stuff? Are y'all like when you go out of town to a fly shop, are you like, purposely when you go in that shop are you looking to buy a t-shirt or hat or a pint glass or a sticker if with the hat name on fits it? me <laughs> <laughs> absolutely dale said i'm always on the look for a hat that fits me so like if, if i find like my favorite shops outside of us <laughs> I, i'm immediately just taking that snap all the way out to the yeah. next to last button see if we can make this happen and if if not it's like all right well the choice the decision's made easy for him but no i do try to yeah it's a souvenir yeah you know it's not like we're taking fish home and be like yeah i caught this in that river no I, I got a hat is what i'm taking home but i mean is that like one of your things when you walk like they should have that right Some, something with their name on it yeah i feel like that like when you walk in that's that's a i think that's what like, makes it feel like an individual shop yeah i think the only place i've ever really looked at it to buy i'm i have one intention was big sky anglers yeah so but you didn't trip, do that at West Branch on when we went up there? Not at all. Really? I, you know where I went? I went to that room with the fly tying stuff. Oh, there you go. I went to that room where you was up there. So still, no. We was up That's there talking no. to that dude. I didn't care about buying a shirt. He wanted some fly tines. I just wanted to see it. what they had. I want well, to say, okay, we're up north. We're what's in. The we're in, what, what it, What's up here? Yeah. What are they doing? I wanted to educate myself. I wasn't looking to buy yeah. stuff. Like, what do they have? Yeah. So, you know, big sky. Is the is the one place I went with intention. I'm buying, yeah, you know, a shirt or a hat or something for the boys, yeah. and and I did. So yeah, I'm kind of looking for what they got going on. Um, stickers, kind of stickers, you know, yeah, you know, some that's important to people. I think it's sticker selection in the what shop. About you, you've asked us two questions down, you hadn't answered them. Uh, I'm just getting y'all's opinion. <laughs> I mean, yeah, because we got them. So yes, you should. <laughs> yes, Bobby thinks that's important. Yes. Everything in our it, shop that I'm asking about, I think is important. I was about to say, you know what's important to us when you walk in the door. There's uh, there's three logo hats here. There's a sticker. That's right true. Here. We all, oh yeah, we do. We all got. I'm them wearing on. a logo That's shirt. Right. Yeah, I don't have a logo <laughs> shirt on, but yeah, yeah, we've got them. The um, convenience center. Yeah, we got. So it. so what is um, yeah, logoed water bottles? <laughs> <laughs> we can make that happen. Logo, logoed spring water. You Actually, do. we do have that. I forgot. We've got the, yeah. the. We're trying to get away from the single use plastic, so we got the. Yeah, the, the, the orange water bottle. Water bottles. I with forgot. our logo, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, what's, you know, obviously you're not naming names of shops. What's your worst experience in a shop? Like the actual experience, not the name of the shop. No, Yeah, don't say names. No names. Hmm, let me think. If you've got one in your mind, Dale, say it, because i got to think about it for a second. All right, so this one stuck with me, and this is kind of one of those that, that drives me. Um. Guy walks in. He's he's fishing a local river, and I'm not even going to say the name of the river because I don't want to even say the region this this shop's in. But uh, guy says, "Man, I've I've had a pretty tough day today. I haven't I haven't caught too many fish." The guy behind the counter, what? You should have caught a hundred. <laughs> what's what's wrong with you? What are you doing? What? You you man, you should have caught a hundred fish today. That, something's wrong. And I mean, just I, I saw this guy just like totally just. He he just like all his manhood just left. I mean, he just shrank. He just shriveled up, and I I don't know. He he may have ended up getting some help, but I don't think so. Because at that point, he shut down. You can you can give all the advice to that guy you want. He's not listening. Yeah, I wouldn't. But that that was terrible, and that wasn't to me. But I saw it happen. Um. So that that was that was pretty. That wasn't good. 
So, yeah, probably the and, and it wasn't a terrible experience or anything like that, but it was the whole greeting you. I've walked in a fly shop, and this has happened in multiple fly shops. So it's not even a singular fly shop, where from the time you walk in the door, you walk, do the lap. A um, couple of them, you go upstairs. Like there's multiple levels. You look at stuff. I mean, you spend fifteen or twenty minutes just looking around, and never say one word. Not mm-hmm. a how's your day. Not a how you doing. Did you go fish? Nothing. Well, that's it. And, and like that is a terrible thing not to just acknowledge somebody walking in your business. Yes, and it's a privilege to us that you're in our shop yeah not the other way around and that's exactly what you're hitting on there is you can walk into some shops and this is what hurts the sport more than anything is 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 that that idea that you're in this shop it, it's a privilege for you to walk through yeah. that door and you I, better be wearing the right hat or right shirt yeah it's it's weird how that is because i've had it happen i say three times that i can think of off the top of my head really where at I can't tell <laughs> that. <laughs> See if I can trip you One up. of them is a very well-known fly shop. Yeah. Very well-known, like nationwide. Gosh. That's a and it happened in that one. Now, is that the ownership's fault? No, not necessarily. could have been that person that was in the shop that day or whatever. But, you know, it, it's – did I ever go back? Yeah, I walked back in again, and you know what? It happened again. So it's like – uh, Yeah. So it's, well, it, that, that says there's an issue when it happens more than once. Sure. You know, everybody has a bad day in everything, so it's like yeah, give, we're give, not give everybody perfect. a second chance. We're not perfect. Yeah, it's like when you go to a restaurant and you don't have the best experience. You know, come back in a couple of weeks, you might have a great experience. Sure. And then you go, okay, as long as it's consistent, that's all you want. I'm sure there's some some folks that could maybe say that about some experience with us, but oh yeah, absolutely. But we're we're definitely not. That's not our yeah goal. Like you said, yeah. second chance. What about you, Shannon? I would be more like what Bobby talked about, yeah. where I felt like. Um, I should be honored to be in their place of business right. instead of the other way around. So it wasn't anything like this shop's too messy. I'm out. Cause you said the aesthetics were a big thing. Um, I don't go to a lot of fly shops because I don't travel as you know, we got everything a, a you need. lot. <laughs> um, you know, I'm, I'm getting ready to, you know, to head down here in a couple of weeks to do some stuff, uh, in the low country. And yeah, you know, I, I went into one particular location that's closed down there now mm-hmm. and was like, wow, there's nothing really much here. Mm-hmm. They were friendly and talked, which was fine, too. And But as far as having product. Or, it wasn't January, was it? No, no, it wasn't January. I remember getting yelled at because we didn't have floating in January one time. Like, that, that blew me away. Like, we had sold out. Yeah. And it happens. But I got yelled at from a dude from the low country. But, um, no, it, it's one of those, whether it's a fly shop or whatever place of business, if you make me feel like <laughs> I owe you something to be in your business, it's a total turn off yeah. to me. My question about, hey, you know, you should have caught 100 fish was, did he come off as a, hey, you should have caught 100 fish? Or, man, you should have caught 100 fish. Let's let's see how we can help No, you. it was total arrogance. Yeah. yeah it, it, was, gotcha. it was belittling. Was it? Yeah. Because yeah. I, that's, that's I, I felt bad for the guy. Oh, wow. And, you know, at the time, I didn't know how to catch 100 fish in a day sure. either. So I was like, I was listening like, oh, that's a good question. Like, mm-hmm. Oh, oh yeah. good thing I didn't ask that question, right? Like, I'm the guy sitting at the back letting everybody else ask the questions. And, and I'm paying attention, you know. Yeah. The other thing about aesthetics, and, and I didn't hit on this, but thinking about what you just asked um, there, uh, Dale, um, if I go into a fly shop and it's no longer a fly shop anymore, meaning I got skateboards on the wall, it's overran by everything else. Uh, like oh, they're just trying to get a dollar from everything. Yeah, that yeah. to me is is a turn off. Like drinks and snacks, or no, not that. I no, that it really is is if you think about it, is not a bad thing. It, yeah, it, yeah, yeah, I mean, I know we've added it, and it's kind of the joke, but you're kind of thinking about your customer there, actually. Yeah, yep. That's headed out the door. We've all forgot stuff. It happens, right? Or maybe they have a furry friend outside that needs water. Yeah. Uh, you know, we we provide that. But when you go in and it's just over, it's it's gone too much to the touristy side mm. of yeah. it, to where maybe the fly part of it's not the most important part of the business. It's more, you know, how many souvenirs can we put in their home that's not even associated with fishing per se. Yeah, I, I've seen that happen, and those places are they don't appeal to me. Yeah, that's just me. Well, no, we've we've gone through that evolution. I mean, in in 
talking with one of our sales reps, he, he said, you know, I really felt like you guys have over the, I don't know how he knew this so quick, but he, he, he said, you, know, you guys are trying to, for some years, trying to figure out what you can do. What, what, what kind of shop are you? And, you know, I think we've got to dial down. Like we're a fly fishing shop. Like that's what we sell. That's what we're going to sell. It, it, it's not a, <coughs> it's not a, um, dress barn. Right. I mean, it's, you know? it's one thing to have, I mean, like we have, I, I mean, you know, the mugs are a great fit, mm -hmm. you know, the glasses, those things are fine. I don't yeah. have a problem with that. And this yeah. fact, I think it's kind of good, good to see that because not only, <laughs> well, a no. lot of boxes in the back. So I good. mean, <laughs> no, but <laughs> I know, I know. you know, it's one of those things that's tangible and you can have for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you come here, it's a special occasion. You can take something that is a tangible Momento, you can take back from your experience here with Tuckasee Fly Shop, that it that is it's not overwhelming the people, right? You know, it's it's not uh, you know trying to sell you souvenir posters or you know Whatever things else. like that, right? It, it's Pink really flamingo. it goes together. So I it, to me, you go into a fly shop that's been established, they're going to have some of that stuff. They're going to have logo not only in apparel and, sh and yeah, yeah, yeah. shirts, but uh, you know it's it's going to be maybe some in the something that may appeal to some other people in the family. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I would personally, I would probably buy a pint glass or a low ball glass. Or maybe not. A I don't drink a lot of coffee, but the coffee mugs are cool too. Cause you can put pins or put them on your fly time desk sure. or your pheasant tails or whatever. I would probably buy that before I bought a hat or a shirt from mm -hmm. a fly shop most of the time. Yeah. Just cause I think it's, it's a little bit more, you know, cool. I mean, we use pint glasses at our house from places all over. Mm -hmm. So it kind of yeah. just fits that. Paid for or stolen. Uh, paid for, paid for. Actually, a couple of them I did win in uh, <laughs> trivia, nice. trivia nights nice. at a couple breweries. Yeah, that's always fun. Um, so I have I have won those. Um, but yeah, I mean, you I know. like seeing. I like one other thing. I hadn't talked about. I like seeing some art on the walls. You mean yeah. just like something like a local art? Like we, you know, we've got yeah local artist up, and we'll have some more coming in April. Yeah. I I think, and and this is where, in my opinion, and, and we talked about it. I think we can do a better job. And that's growth, the self evaluating. Yeah, always. I mean, oh, absolutely. I, I have never is. thought about the those being on the chalkboard being correlated to the fly bands. I hadn't thought about that till just now. Um, would be, you know, photos from uh, our experiences mm -hmm. with folks. Yeah, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I, I I think that you know we could whether it's electronically or in print somehow yeah. incorporate that uh, yeah. in somewhere in in the shop. But we've been into once again after a big sky downstairs. That stuff is awesome. Yeah. yeah. But being able to throw some of those out here, something, or maybe a you know, like a board with little little printouts on it, not big, but people can kind of look at. It's not a bragging board. I mean, it's in some ways it is, but yeah. You know, here you know, here's here's a family of four that just had a vacation with us and went out with two excellent guides and had fun. Yeah. You know that kind of stuff. Well, you know? the the pictures are all people can take home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're doing so, catch and release trips or or pint glass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> someone walks in and says, "Oh man, that's neat to see." You know, people are doing this, and they look at it, and yeah. it's like their their photo album. Whether they partake in it, but maybe they live vicariously through someone who, who's yeah. been out with us. Yeah. Well, and that's you know um, one thing certainly that's awesome about that basement, of the Big Sky, is they've got Chris Daniel um, working with them. That's George Daniel's brother, I believe. Incredible photographer, and his stuff's on uh, Instagram, MT four oh six shooter. And it's like Nat Geo stuff. I mean, it's, it's, oh, it's, it's fantastic. And then Jonathan, I believe, is also an excellent photographer as well. So, yeah, photography is, is I think, a huge part of that. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, cool. Yeah, yeah, man. Well, that's good. Y'all, everybody out there that's listening, you know, call us or put comments in, all that good stuff about, you know, what, what you like or expect. Because, you know, we like to hear that stuff. Plus, it's also a, hey, we never thought of that. You like seeing that, and we don't have it. Mm -hmm. And it might be something we can incorporate in our, to our places. So, yeah. good feedback for us, too. Yeah. Um, You ready for a fishing report? It, before we get into that, I'm before I first. don't forget about, we got to do the guy tip as well and make sure we do that. If you notice anything different today, just comment below in the comment sections on YouTube. That's right. And we'll leave it at that. Yeah. It's a couple different things, actually. Yeah, a couple There's different a couple things. Different so different. if you notice something, let us know. If Just you say it. it. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to do a, uh, a guy tip or a fishing report. Fishing time. report. So the fishing report this week is brought to you by Norvice. Norvice. Tie better flies. 
faster, and efficient. There we go. Gotta get this off. There we go. Did you get it? This up. You got the graph. I gotta get the Norvice thing up. Uh, I hit the wrong wait, button again. There it is. <laughs> efficient. All oh, right. Nice. You gonna play the water? I'm just waiting for you to start. <laughs> what are we? What are we? Is God tip? No. Fish, 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 fish report. report. Yeah, fish is great. I, you know the fish on the tuck are getting educated on the delayed harvest. Um, I, you know, there's been pretty fair waiting conditions. Um, so they, you know, they've been, people have been getting after it. So, um, I do still recommend wearing waders on the tuck. Hats off to the guy that I saw yesterday, not wearing waders. Do you think maybe that, that that's a dude? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not yeah. a dude. I got to wear my waders, man. That's hats off. But, um, you know, dry fly action on the tuck. Yell stimulator. Rocking, baby. Oh, my gosh. Rockin'. Yellow caddis, not yet. Mm -hmm. uh, on the tuck. Uh, we caught them on the, well, with Gene in there. on the Webster stretch. <laughs> we caught them with Gene. I know. On the Webster stretch. Well, not up in Web, but down there by uh, On the Dillsborough stretch, yellow caddis. I'd say on the Webster stretch, stick with the yellow stimulator. But, uh, you know, nymphs, you know, the girdle bug, they're still on it there. But uh, National Park is Parachute hair's ear, baby. Parachute lit. hair's ear. Like on the Instagram story, it's like fire, 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 fire. Lit. Great cornholio. Lit. Praise hands. Praise hands. Praise hands. <laughs> so, <laughs> I wonder if this rain's going to change that at all. Um, warm it up, right? Warm it up. You know, the water temps are actually already warm. What's going to affect it more? Warm is, meaning what range? Let's relative to where we've been. No, no, it, it's. They're not the, in the 60s or anything. No, 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 no. They were in like so, the high 40s, maybe? The, yeah, the, the, high, the high. It was actually hit up about 52 the other day. Did yeah. it? Okay. Up in the valley. I think what's going to affect Up in the, the looch. Why don't you call it the the looch? In the looch, baby. <laughs> looch. <laughs> I'm just saying. In the valley. Looch. Looch. Does that take on a whole other meaning? I'm up in the looch? It's like <laughs> mole. <laughs> mole. Oh, my goodness. But uh, mole. Uh, Cat Looch. Um, what will the thirty degree nights coming up here in the oh, next yeah. couple? Of, yeah, by the time the podcast is out, it's it's going to cool down just a little bit. Yeah. That could have more of an effect on it than what we've had now. Yesterday was amazing, uh, watching what the sun would do. So yeah. it was sun. And sun was in and out. Yes, on the tuck, we're floating. Sun would come out, bright, beautiful sun, for five minutes or so. Sun would come, you know, go yes. back behind a cloud. And then about 30 seconds later, after the sun disappeared, caddis hatch everywhere. So that, it was all day long. Just just all day, the sun in and out, hatch. Sun out, sun gone, hatch. Did you notice when the bugs were coming off, were they in certain type of water, such as moving water, still water? Downstream from the moving water. Okay. So yeah, so mid-pool to end of the pool for sure. And most of our hookups were. Right. Mid pool to end of the pool. Mm -hmm. so. so that's kind of the point you have to understand that's is right. these fish will move to where these bugs are coming off. Yeah, at. absolutely. Got to be in tune. That's your guy tip, too. No, uh, there'll be another kidding, one to be a bonus kidding. one in there. A bonus. <laughs> a bonus. Yeah. That's the bonus. There'll be a bonus in there. So Hen Hendrickson's. Hendrickson's, can, you know, the, the quills still kicking. Right. Uh, black stoneflies. So I, I'd say like yeah. the black stimulators probably going to do it. One on right. the drifter's camera. Yeah, he caught, he caught one oh, on really? his camera. Yeah, yeah. yeah, on his lens. Yeah, that's awesome. Yep, all cool. kinds of stuff hatching. Everything's happening. It is. It's it's a neat time. Yeah. Well, and you know, I I I said this on Instagram the other day. This is probably the best March conditions I've seen in years. Like we're not having that huge. This is still March, right? <laughs> Tomorrow's like, St. Patty's Day. It, it. Oh gosh, it is. You gotta wear your green, boys. So. Normally, it's like a huge roller coaster, like it 71 can be. day, snow the next, yeah. mm -hmm. and then some crazy freezing weather thrown in there to mix, too. But this has been fairly consistent. Yeah. And dry. For the last, like, 30 days. It's it, been yeah. Consistent. It has. You know, we got the rain today. Um, you know, it hasn't necessarily been windy yet, which I'm yeah. sure it will sometime. That's the oh, thing with my some good kites. marches to yeah. kite flying yeah. season. Um, but, you know, things are starting to green up. Yeah. You, you gentlemen was up in the park. Well, did you see things greening up? Did you see any flowers par nope. you know, popping up? Nothing. No, no one of the purple flowers yet? Not at that okay. elevation. All right. You weren't yeah. really. I, I, that's surprising. That elevation is higher than you realize up at the fork. Oh! There's that's more than one fork. fork. 
Yeah. Messer Fork. There's more than one fork. Clark There's fork. a lot of forks. But no, we didn't see any. There's also three forks. Are you going to get there? You know something we did see? Okay. Is where the the pig trap usually is on Messers. And that tour, uh, yeah. It's like a, a net that's ex- suspended in the air. Oh, now. really? And we're, we were ah, like, what cool, does that look dude. like it's designed to come down? Or we were thinking it's to keep the birds away from something they're putting there to draw them in. The they, last had, they had two game cameras set up, too. Oh, that's cool. So the last time I was up so there. So if you hear of a Sasquatch sighting recently, it was just Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> well, that we do have at least a 7-Eleven quality picture of a Sasquatch, so I believe in that one. But uh, oh, on the next episode, that's yeah. Right. But uh, I like it. let's let's think about that. The, I think the last time I was up there at the fork, the um the trap was gone, but that whole area, the vegetation was just like totally worn down. Yeah, like it's a still lot like of that. traffic, like yeah, a lot yeah. of animal traffic, you know, through there. Someone told me recently in the last couple of weeks, two to three weeks, that they seen some hogs. Uh, with a Z, hogs. With an S. <laughs> Lots of them over uh, on the kind of lefty. Oh, really? Inside the park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hadn't seen none in a long time. Yeah. And we know they're in there. And they're uh, going to have people out there stopping traffic for the hogs, just like they do the elk now. The, you know, the turkeys get no play, man. They, they don't. Nobody <laughs> stops for a turkey. <laughs> no, nobody stops, nobody for, stops for a turkey. Nobody wants to whisper <laughs> in their ear with a twenty-two. <laughs> but, yeah. But uh, no, it's always the elk get to play. That's right. Now you throw in, in the bear. you throw in some Nothing hogs, bear. you ain't going nowhere. That's, it. that's right. So yeah, um, that's neat to hear about that. Mm-hmm. Typically, I like for the wildflowers to start coming up. When that happens, you can get some real, real, real consistent hatches of those quill gordons, and you can pretty much fish those guys all day long. But yeah. that's not far away. Yeah, not far away. About time, baby. It is. That's awesome. Great information there for sure. So the guide tip of the week. What that be, Bobby? Oh, man, make sure you go to the bathroom before you get any waiters. No, no. I mean, that's joking. true, though. You I should, right? I Bobby mean, had should. hot pants. No. Was, I saw that, man. Bobby had hot pants. <laughs> Bobby had hot pants. I was, man. I was, was hot. I was roasting. How hot was Bobby? He had uh, hot pants. No, the, 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 when you have waiters, yeah. mm-hmm. when you get done fishing for the day or for the weekend. Yes, I know where you're you, going. You want to take these things home and hang them on your deck or on your shower curtain in your apartment or whatever you have and let them dry out. Then you want to reverse them, yes. which means turn them inside out yes. and do the same thing again. Preach which it. one should you do first? Preach it, brother. I always do the outside first and then the inside. That's just me um, because I feel like the outside's got more moisture on it. Yeah. Um, and then I do the inside. But you need you need to do that so you don't have mold and mildew form inside your waist because your, your skin does wick moisture into the waiter. Amen. That doesn't all come out. And so, you know, if you give it a good 12 hours – and then reach your hand down there. I guarantee you, there's still moisture in that booty. Blech. Yeah, and uh, waiter funk. Flip them Y'all inside don't want out. That waiter funk. And then put them away. Yep. Uh, so that way, your waiters will last long. The manufacturers will not honor the warranty if they have mold or mildew inside them. Yep. So, God tip it. I away. was amazed. I had to file a warranty on some waiters, and took them. And they they, the company recommended them. You wash them before you mail them. Right. I was shocked. How dirty at the are. water in the bathtub. Oh yeah, it gets nasty brown. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. It was awful. Now, how did you wash your waiters? I, I think I if I remember right, it was just some dawn and a brush. Okay. Was was it inside and out. Were those waiters a Gore-Tex waiter? They were. Yeah. 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 Um another thing, another quick guy tip. Oh, bonus. Man, all kinds bonus of bonus tips. Drink, drink water. Y'all gotta pay for this. Drink mm-hmm. water. Yeah. No, hydrate. I mean, I, we the weather was so perfect mm-hmm. the last week and this week on the water. We completely forgot. Yeah. So, and we had the water with us. We just didn't make the time to do it. So, drink some agua. Yeah, it's important. And I've I've got that little patch now on the back of my head. Oh, you got the half sun going. I got the the semicircle going on in the back of my no, head because I didn't put sunscreen on. We call oh. that the rising sun. On the rising day. sun. I got the. The flag on the, the <laughs> what's that? The Japanese flag, right? It is. Yeah. It is. You got the half. half you look. Sun. You look like you're afraid of what I was about to say, man. No, I'm just. <laughs> what's he about? Thinking to where this could go many different directions, but I knew you was going to keep it G. Ball guy jokes. Mm. Mm. Well, good show, fellas. It was fun it was. stuff. It was, and uh, 
you know, if you have any comments, like Bobby said, be sure to do that. You know, share the podcast with your friends, whether it's video or mm-hmm. audio. I think you might can share audio. I'm not for sure. Well, you can share the YouTube link, probably. Yeah. Something hey, like man, that. we got to say hi to those people out west. Where, where's those people out in? Uh, was it Washington State? Is uh, listening? I'd say to that again. Where? That where? where are they where? from? Was that that Washington State out yonder? Oh, I don't know Lake, where Washington Lake State something, is. right? Oh, what was the name? Was that Lake, Lake Stevens? I think it is. It is Lake I, Stevens. I think it's Lake Stevens and West Lake Stevens. There you go, I West Lake and it. Lake Stevens. There Hello, man. We appreciate you listening to us That's on the awesome. podcast, man, on audio. That's awesome. So it's either a robot or a bunch of people like us out there. Anyway, you're listening. Thank you. So, Hats off to you. One or the other. Absolutely. That's awesome. Well, well, cool. Good show. Good show. My wife just texted me about eating, so let's go it, eat. You know, it's one of those dub. things. Time to grow. Well, you know, before we do that, I got to give a special thank you to Norvice. As always, Norvice. for making this episode possible. Oh, to learn nice. more about the Norvice fly tying system, visit www.nor-vice.com. Or visit them on YouTube at nor-vice and see the Norvice in action. Do I type in nor h y p h e n p i nor hyphen vice? You're asking because someone will try that. I'm just saying. No, yeah. it's just the. To see around the curve, man. Dude, it's just Nordash. The, it's just the word Nordash Vice. Nord, Nord, Nordash Vice dot com or hyphen Nordash Vice. Hey, Nordash Vice. Let's 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 go home, fellers. Thanks, y'all. That wraps up another exciting and informative episode of the Tuckcast with a splash of bourbon presented by Tuckasegee Fly Shop and Guide Service located at 3 Depot Street, Bryson City, North Carolina and 530 West Main Street, Silver, North Carolina. Be sure to visit www.tuckflyshop.com for stream flow information, book a guided trip, or even shop for your favorite Tuckasegee Fly Shop gear. Follow the crew on Facebook at Tuckasegee Fly Shop, Instagram at Tuck Fly Shop, and on YouTube at Tuckasegee Fly Shop. If you have a question or comment, feel free to send those to info at tuckflyshop.com or give us a call 1-828-488-3333. For Coach Dell Diesel Collins, Bobby the Bearded Wonder Bennett, I'm Shannon, Big Mess Messer. We'll catch you next week. Be sure to catch a few fish out there, won't you? Y'all take care. <laughs>